I'm so excited about the contents of this beat up box that I've promoted it to the top of the review list. Hi and welcome to Last Watch. If you haven't already done so, I would appreciate if you would like this video and consider subscribing to the channel. It literally takes seconds to do and gives YouTube a friendly kick up the backside about sharing my videos. Thanks. Today I have a first for the channel, quite possibly an exclusive. I've been sent a watch from a brand that has yet to be released. Its official launch date on Kickstarter will be the 5th of December. It's a small window of opportunity to grab yourself what might be a bit of a bargain. I should point out that today's watch is a prototype and I'm told that this rather basic white box will be replaced by something more fitting. Time to open her up and see what we have inside. Well, this might explain why the box struggled to retain its structure, as we have a watch roll and no other packaging to pad it out. This watch roll is not real or genuine leather. It's real genuine PU leather, but looks, feels and smells like the real thing. A fairly substantial buckle. And here we get the first hint at the brand with an embossed Forteller script. More on Forteller in a moment. Now I know the watch is here on the right, and I'd like to save that to last. Let's start on the left and see what comes in the roll. A brown Halloween leather strap with contrasting white stitch. And some 20 millimeter quick release spring bars. They should save a bit of time with the strap changes. The tang and buckle are brushed stainless steel. They are unadulterated at the moment, but will come signed with a foreteller name on the production models. You can see they took the time to emboss the reverse of the leather strap. A 1.4mm screwdriver, and there's a bag in there containing some extra tool heads. I suspect there may be another tool within this roll. A diver style black silicon strap. That should give you a clue about today's watch. This is quite a lightweight basic rubber strap, again fitted with quick release spring bars. The reverse of the strap is actually quite intricate and ornate compared to its front. It has two rubber keepers, but the tang and buckle are brushed stainless steel. And this one is actually signed. I suspect that this will be the replacement buckle for the Halloween strap. There's also quite a nice touch here that I've not seen before. Some little hooks or stirrups on the side of the strap to help hold one of the keepers in place and stop it from sliding along the strap. A deep blue spring bar removal tool. No doubt the parent for those additional tool heads we saw previously. And finally, we get to see the watch, the Cambrian, a 300 meter diver from Forteller. I'll get the plastic off this three link bracelet and get it resized for my seven inch wrist. Forteller is a Norwegian brand founded in 2019 by Sven Even. They've spent more than a year designing their watch and sourcing their parts and manufacturers. And although they are pretty much at the production stage, they are still open to a few small tweaks if deemed necessary. If you see anything on today's watch that could be improved upon, be sure to leave a comment. It may well be included on the watch that you buy. The Foreteller name is Norwegian for Storyteller. That's simple enough. They chose Foreteller as they want all their watches to have a story. The logo is based on the F from the ancient Nordic alphabet, which they then mirrored to create what looks very much like a tree. The Scandinavians do seem to like their connection to nature, especially trees. The Cambrian takes its name from the Cambrian Explosion, the beginning of life on Earth, an event that started more than 540 million years ago. Fortella obviously have high hopes for their brand. Let's get the specs out the way. The case diameter is 39.3 millimeters. The bezel sits a little wider at 40.1 millimeters. It has a standard lug width of 20mm and a lug-to-lug -lug of 47mm. 
The case is currently 14.3 millimetres thick, but there are plans to make this slimmer by reducing the thickness of the case back. The weight on the bracelet size for my 7 inch wrist and minus 4 links comes in at 148.6 grams. It will be just under 100 grams on either of the two extra strap options. The Cambrian will be released in four colour variants, this gorgeous green, a beautiful blue, a fairly safe but standard basic black, and for those of you that don't have a torch, a wonderful white with an old BGW9 loom dial. Each variant will have a limited production run of no more than 999 units. The pre-order price for all variants will be €169, Euro, or around $199 or £150. I believe the price will go up by some $50 on the 15th of December. If you like what you see, then best to get in there early and save some cash. The Cambrian Quartet comes with a two-year guarantee. Normally, I would spend a few weeks with a watch before posting its review. For several reasons, I've chosen not to do that with the Foreteller. Firstly, I only have this watch on loan and for a limited time, though Sven is being quite flexible. Secondly, this watch is a prototype and some of its design elements will change on the production models. Lastly, all going well, I'm hoping that Sven will send me one of those production models for review. The Cambrian is an all 316L stainless steel construction. At first glance, I thought Sven had played safe by going down the Rolex inspired route but it would seem its design may lean more towards the direction of Tudor, albeit without the snowflake hands. The case is almost entirely brushed, apart from a highly polished chamfered edge. The slab sides turn down sharply and benefit from drilled lugs. There is a good size unguarded screw down crown, which is signed with a Forteller logo. The crown unscrews and pops out some length from the case, adding to a bit of wobble. The bezel has a nice easy to grip industrial coin edge finish and turns unidirectionally and quite snappily through 120 clicks. There are no alignment issues and no back play. Strangely, I was told that the bezel action would be improved upon as they have had some issues during pre-production. If this isn't one of those updated bezels, then I must have got lucky. The bezel insert is ceramic with an all matte black finish with white indices and markers, which are fully loomed with BGW9. The bezel insert sits noticeably under the edge of the bezel frame. This may well be deliberate to protect the ceramic, but I would have preferred a more flush fit. It rises to meet a slightly raised flat sapphire crystal, which has three layers of anti-reflective coating. Below the sapphire, we have a green fume starburst dial. Green isn't my colour, but I do appreciate how this green plays with the light. I won't spend too much time talking about the applied indices, which I am sure you will have seen many, many times on many a dive watch. I will just add that their polished frames have nice clean white fill of C3 Superluminova, nor for patina on what is very much a vintage inspired diver. There is an oversized polished silver Fotello logo just below the 12 o'clock inverted triangle. I say oversized, as it seems that way when you compare it to the tiny white printed text above the 6 o'clock position. A bit of balance may be needed here to highlight the watch's name and its depth rating of 300 meters, which is almost indecipherable without a loop. If you ever needed proof that watch reviewers don't get the pick of the pot, then look no further. With the aid of macro, it's not uncommon to find a bit of debris on the dial or hands of a budget-friendly watch. The Cambrian is no exception with a hair sitting steadfast between the 8 and 9 o'clock indices. Quality control is something that Sven should be discussing with his manufacturers. Now I don't hide the fact that I prefer my watches without date windows, but they are something I've become accustomed to on some of my favourite watches. The Cambrian's date window sits quite happily on and above the applied 6 o'clock indice. Its polished silver frame is part of that indice. The white date wheel is yet another aspect due to be replaced, as it will give way to a negative display, with white arabics on a black background. That will be the same for both the black and blue models, only the white dial will keep the black arabics on a white date wheel. We have fairly standard 
polished silver sword hour and minute hands, though they do have a well-defined central ridge at their tips. The body of these hands has the same white fill C3 loom of the applied indices. The second hand has a syringe tip with added loom in its vial and a diamond shaped counterbalance. I'll throw in a loom shot here where you can see that the Cambrian comes into its own and puts on a pretty decent light show. I'm reliably informed that they will be adding even more BGW9 loom on the production models. How much loom is too much loom? Turning the watch over reveals a rather large embossed trilobite on the screw down case back. I hope you don't have an aversion to bugs as it looks somewhat like a woodlouse. It may well leave a mark on your wrist that friends and family try to swat off from a distance when you remove your watch. The case back has the watch's credentials around its perimeter, which include its water resistance to 30 atmospheres, its sapphire glass, Forteller brand name and its Cambrian moniker. This one also has a version 1 ID. Also inscribed is that this watch is home for the Seiko NH35 a micro brand favourite, an automatic movement with 24 joules which hacks and hand winds and vibrates at 21,600 beats per hour or 6 ticks per second. It has a bi-directional winding rotor and a power reserve of more than 40 hours and not forgetting its quick set date complication. The Cambrian bracelet is a revelation and equals that of some brands costing considerably more. It's an entirely brushed solid stainless steel oyster wannabe. It has tight fitting 20mm solid female end links that taper to 16mm at the clasp. The all brushed press clasp and buckle jumps back up to 18mm. The buckle sports the Fortella logo. It has a simple fold over safety and catch release which reveals a fully milled deployant. Resizing the bracelet was a doddle using the provided tools. The full size links have screw pins, there are no half size links. The buckle however does have four holes for micro adjustment, which I made use of to get a perfect fit. Unlike some other more affordable brands, there was no fighting to relocate any of the pins. This bracelet would look quite at home on my Steinhardt OVM. The watch dimensions and silky smooth bracelet hit a sweet spot on my 7 inch wrist and lend themselves to a very comfortable fit. I may struggle to remove it. Forteller won't be winning any awards for originality with their watch, but it's a strikingly affordable package. A solid 300 meter dive watch with a ceramic bezel, sapphire crystal, NH35 movement, drilled lugs, and a quality bracelet, all for less than $200. The watch roll Extra straps and tools just help sweeten the deal. It will be nice to see how the Cambrian looks after its final tweaks. The text on the dial is definitely something they should rectify and possibly give the hour hand a bit more presence while they're at it. The symmetry of the date window at 6 o'clock works very well. The bezel insert does sit quite low and I noticed the application of the white loom on the 12 o'clock triangle was a little thin. Putting the quality control issues to one side, these are very minor details, but I remind you, this is a prototype and not the finished article. With regards to the packaging, the plain white box will be replaced with a printed box along the Cambrian theme. If sales go well, then your watch may well come in a wooden box. The only thing that strikes me as odd is the whole Cambrian theme. I get where Sven is coming from about making an impact in the market but he spent so much time developing the Forteller brand based around a unique concept of Nordic folklore, why didn't he stick with that as his theme? In any case, if he sticks with geology, then I'm looking forward to the Jurassic period. Having a monster watch with a T-Rex on the case back would be a real blast. Many thanks to Sven and Forteller for sending me the Cambrian. It's been a real joy and I feel somewhat privileged for being one of the very first to get my hands on the watch. I wish you the best of success with the launch and hitting your targets and look forward to having you back on the channel very soon. Sadly, my time with the Cambrian has come to an end and it will soon be headed back to Norway. If you'd like to add this little beast to your wrist, then I'll add a link to the Fortella website in the video description below. The big question now is for £150, 
should I go for the blue or the black dial? Just before I sign off, I have some great news. Ralph from Mirage Luxury Travel wasn't happy with the overinflated selling price of his watch roll on some of the Amazon UK third party sellers. That matter has now been rectified and he can now grab one of his watch rolls for a more affordable 69 quid. You can thank me in the comments. I'll add a link to those in the video description below. My next review will be on a self-proclaimed luxury quality watch manufacturer. Brainy points if you can guess the brand. Thanks for watching, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video.